So after tipping the ballast on the tracks, I use a brush just to get it into position. I use a couple of brushes actually and really make sure there's a lot of this ballast out of the way of the sleepers because when you glue it down this is going to get in the way on the inner track not going to get in the way of the wheel flange so you need to not have too much ballast creeping up on the inside of that track these are things that you want to try and avoid if you can, little pieces of ballast sticking up on the inside rail. They really need to not not be there. Now when you glue the ballast you're going to get pieces like that in there so you're going to have to scrape them away from the inner rail afterwards and they're the pieces you're looking for to clear this track, make it nice. With ballasted foam it automatically fits in position, you don't get this issue at all. Now all of my points on this layer in the fiddle yard, which is good, it means I don't have to ballast around them so they stay functioning nicely, but all I can say to you is if you're going to hand ballast this way, put grains in almost on an individual level, just very few grains in there and make it nice and grey underneath so that it, it kind of looks like gravel even if there isn't gravel there underneath but don't put too many pieces in because you must not impede this movement at all and you could even spray it grey and then a spray of black to give a sort of mottled effect before you put the ballast on so if the ballast doesn't happen to be covering it it still looks like ballast underneath you I don't like louts where there's actually gaps here because that just looks like they haven't really tried. Um, no disrespect to anyone, but I can understand why people want to avoid this area. It is very sensitive to ballast, but if you get it right, it looks good and these points will still flick into position. Of course, if you get it wrong, you totally ruin the point and the only way out of that really is to replace the point. So there is the ballast all down ready for gluing. It's taken me about an hour to do um, half of two loops, so quite a long while really. Now I've been talking about ballasted foam and this is Gage Master GM200 and this is what it looks like. It's a very short piece of it of course, so it, it can be bent to any shape so it can accommodate curves and you can cut it for under points and it, if you cut out these sections it won't impede the points either but as you can see it can be stretched to fit and it fits snugly and nicely under any rail with the sleepers still showing and there's no way any of this actual granite that's stuck on the foam is going to get in the way of the inner rail so that ensures the ballast won't get in the way so I, I like that form of ballasting but it is very expensive, that's the downside. The other advantage is it's very quiet, very quiet indeed. It cushions the track and therefore the locomotives run smooth over it as well. And I think it looks good because it actually has the right sort of shape to it. It comes in grey or brown, this is the grey version. And you can also get the particles separate, so in between pieces of track you can add ballast in the normal way and glue it down in the regular way so that is a, another option I mentioned it here I've shown it on other videos using the ballasted foam for example on Langton's retreat so there's different ways of, of doing this no right or wrong really it's a preference each has its own advantages with this I'm doing it for cheapness so one thing you need to do is really get it soaking wet but spray it gently so you don't blow the ballast everywhere and that really helps the PVA glue to seep in that's nice So here is Tumby Woodside with the double O track ballasted on that side in the fiddle yard, left plane of course. Now I've still got to do the end gauge, I've got finer ballast for that. 
so the principles will be fundamentally the same. And now I just leave this to dry.